uh, welcome. This is my mother. And uh, my mom. Mama. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put on my microphone here. And uh, we are going to have a little bit of fun today in the shop. And we're going to be playing with, sorry if this is a little loud with the microphone here. We're going to be making letter openers slash wooden knives um, and having a bit of fun here. So um, let me tell you a little bit about what exactly we're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing a little bit of carving, a little bit of shaping, and today's video is really going to be about the how-to of how to make this. So we're not going to be doing as much of a Q&A as we did last week. Uh, but that being said, if anyone does do a super chat, uh, we'll answer your questions. So thank you for that. Um, let's see, what else do we have to say? Uh, if you knew in the chat, my wife is over at the computer. Sarah, say hi, babe. Hello. <laughs> So she'll be manning the chat and answering some of your questions. And if you have any questions you'd like to ask her behind my back, now's the time to do it. Okay, so, hang on, uh, hang on. The audio is low. I thought I turned it up. So before we go any further, what's that? Audio is low. Oh no. Um. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? No volume at all. Um. Let me, let me check this. So uh, just a moment here. Let me run back over here to the computer. This is always a fun thing about live. And uh, let me see on here. Let's try this. Let me try this. Wow, I'm not getting anything from my feed at all. Okay. Um, oh, helps if I turn the microphones on. <laughs> There's always something. I forgot to turn on the microphones. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, we should be getting audio here in a moment. <laughs> There's always something at the beginning of every chat. But uh, yeah, let's try it again. This is this is my mother, also known as mom. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today we are going to be building a, uh, a knife or a uh, letter opener, making, building, making, I don't know what you call making. it. Making. So um. a, a wooden knife. Um, if the audio is good now, please let us know in the chat. Um, this won't be as much of a Q&A as we have done in the past. Uh, we're just going to be focusing on this. But that being said, if anyone does a super chat, uh, we will answer your questions. So uh, if you want to do that, great, go for it. Um, but today we're going to be doing a little bit of carving, a little bit of shaping. We're going to be creating a knife. And hopefully we're going to get through this in the next hour or so. Depending on how good your, your, your student is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're starting with a simple block of wood. And let me do this then. See, I'm trying to play with the uh, the two camera setup here. So hopefully, we'll actually be able to show you some more specifics about exactly what we're doing here. Ooh, look at that! I gotta focus. There we go. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna be starting with a simple block of white oak here, and it's just a scrap. So nothing any nothing uh, special other than this wood is actually about a hundred years old. Pulled it out of a uh, a desk, and I always get worried when my wife starts laughing over there. Okay. <laughs> I said for you to, for mom to keep you in line. Uh, yes, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the handle. Um, it's easier to to make the handle and then make the knife because it's good to work with the handle when it's flat on here and it's easy to clamp to the bed. So the first thing I want to do is grab a pencil. Here, let me grab one for you. Thank you. And we're going to draw out the shape of the handle. Now, I want mine to have two sides, so the two sides are going to be parallel. So I'm just going to draw a little bit of an indent here, and then I'm going to kind of round over the end, gotcha. and then a little bit of an indent here, and then draw a line where I want the fuller to be. Um, the fuller is, I think the fuller is, the, I'm probably messing up the name. Blade longer than the handle, or? Whatever you want. It's okay. yours to make. This is your world, and you can do whatever you want in it. Yes, my world. <laughs> um, so once we get that drawn out, now it's time to actually start shaping it. So what I'm going to do is put it here in the vise and start carving this out. Now I could grab a spoke shave. Let me bring this around here a little bit better so you can see. I'll be moving this camera occasionally, seeing if I can get that in here. And with the spoke shave, this one has a rounded bottom on it. So I can come in here and slowly round out a bottom. But for something like this, this is actually going to take a little bit of time. So what I want to use is a rasp and file. There's actually another one of these up okay. there if you want it. Which um, one? Straight there. This one. Bingo. Yep. Got it. And with this, I can go across the grain, move it. The closer you get it to the, the vise, the less vibration you have. 
closer to the middle of the vise or no as in the the, pl the part you're working is closer to the the vise oh, really? mount itself okay. gotcha. if it's farther away from it then you get a lot more vibration as the wood flexes and i can use this to just rough out the shape not looking for anything special yet just kind of getting close to it and a rasp and a file really is a two-handed device um, it's you, you have one either end and working into it the nice thing about these things uh, these combination rasps is that you have the rasp on one side and the file on the other so you can then come through and refine a little bit so am I using the right side yeah either right okay yours either. doesn't have okay. as much of a round James we're starting to get a couple questions I know you wanted to focus more on the product I don't know if they can hear you earlier with the microphones ah they don't regarding what? the questions because like I've got one about what your table's made with, but I don't think they heard what your intro was. Re oh, regarding less of a yeah, I'm not going to be answering as many questions today um, because we want to be focusing more on the work. But if anyone does put up a super chat, we will answer that. Um, so unless there's anything really particularly pertinent, um, we're going to try and stay on topic today. Unless it's personal questions about hmm, you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how many? How many spoons did my mother break on my backside? And you notice it, that there's an audio delay and they want to see more of mom. Oh. Oh, let me back this up then. Hi. Go to this. <laughs> no, you don't need to see more of mom. Group not one, uh, two. Let's try this one. There. Switch over um, to the other camera. There we go. Okay, the reason why we're doing a knife today and not a spoon, <laughs> do you want to tell them or should I? Knives are less threatening to me. <laughs> I never threatened him with a knife, but a spoon, oh yeah, that was back in the day. <laughs> yeah, getting okay, close. I'm having some tear out, is that okay? Uh, like on the edge? Or do I just go with, this, with the finer yeah, let me take a side look of it then? It's just oh yeah, you're rounding over already. Uh -huh. really, yeah, Am I not fine. supposed oh, no, no. to be? Like, see, I'm getting like this stuff here. Ah. Are yeah. you saying that the student is learning yes. faster than you expected? She's beaten me. So <laughs> basically, uh, I'm just doing a, a rough working of the side here, uh, where she's already going into kind of rounding and detailing the side. Okay, what's so funny, Sarah? Uh, personal questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not too personal, okay. <laughs> so then once I've done the rounded area inside, I'm going to do the end here. Now at the end, I could grab a spoke shave, and the spoke shave, um, let me switch it back over to two so you can see this, or one. With the spoke shave, it's kind of nice to do this, because it marches through it fairly quickly. Whereas the spoke shave isn't as good at getting inside, um, except for with this rounded bottom, it's fairly good, um, but not that great. Yeah, even that's already starting to bottom out because it's such a steep curve. But for this, I can come right across the end grain here. Okay. And then once I get it through the end grain, then I can refine it a bit with a file. And I'm not looking for anything spectacular yet. All righty. Super chat. One blue lagoon. Woo! Wants to know. More details on rasps and files being used, please. Work okay, uh, well. Work, work it interchangeably as they come up, maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Um, the file that we're using is a combination file here. And you can see how it's, it's rounded on one side and flat on the other. It has a rasp and a file edge, and they reverse. So every time you flip it over, you can go from the, the rounded surface here to the flat surface here, or you can roll it and go from the rough grade to the smooth grade, and that allows you to rough out with the rasp, and then flip it over, and then you can refine it a bit with the file. And that's one of the really nice things about these combinations. Now I will also be using later on a really fine file here, which is more of the, uh, the detail work. It doesn't take off as much material, but it leaves you with a really nice, smoky, smoky, silky smooth surface. <laughs> Snooky smooth say. surface. <laughs> now for the uh, the spoke shaves, I have this one which is a rounded bottom. So the bottom on it is actually rounded over, and this one is flat. The problem with the flat is when I come here for the ends, it's great for this because I'm working on a convex area that can stick up into that flat. 
But if I try and use this one down here where I have a concave area, that blade isn't going to touch anything. It's just going to run back and forth in there. Whereas here, I can work on this end and clean off that tip fairly quickly. And I just sharpened this one so it's even really nice for this end grain. But then I can come back with the file and rasp and clean it up a little bit. Okay, and where did you get your rasps and files? Um, this one a friend gave me in Philadelphia, which is really kind of cool because it's, it's hard to find one like this. Um, these two are ones that I made, so I have videos on making these. They're actually not that hard. They take about 45 minutes of work or so to rough out the shape. Probably total around two hours a piece and you have a spoke shave. This is one of the most common ones ever. It's a Stanley, is it 151? Yes, yeah, this is a 151 or a 51 or a 951. Um, really simple, easy to adjust. This is kind of the, the beginner spoke shave. Um, and I have a link to this one on my website, um, the newer one of this, that works just as well. It's, it's a very simple spoke shave. Um, let's get this back over. Two, two. Um, so yeah, now I have this little paddle end on here. It's not a really fine, refined shape. Yours is, ooh, looking even better. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so mine still has a flat side. Uh, Mom's has rounded hers over a bit more. The next thing I want to do is actually do a little bit of carving. All right. This is the fun part. Yeah. Um, this is why I came tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Here, let me show you what I did on the last one. This one was my prototype that I made uh, earlier today. And so I just did this random weird weave on here. I just drew some curls and swirls. And so that's basically what I want to do. If, if you ever really want to get something, you can go to Google Images and find a pattern and put it on there. Uh, but for today, I just want to have a little bit of fun in here. So I'm going to grab a pencil. And for me, I'm going to draw. I don't know what I'm going to draw. I have no idea. This is the fun part. You're trying to figure out what exactly do you want to draw. So the swirl down here that comes up into this little spray, uh, like that. So a little, like a delta up here that then comes into a swirl. Hmm. Really simple, dumb little design. I like dumb little designs. Let me move back to this one. Um, and I hope you guys are liking this multiple camera thing. I'm trying to play with that and maybe having more of those in the future. Um, I know it kind of glitches in between. Um, hopefully I'll fix that as well, but it's the cheap answer at the moment. So if you guys like that, let me know. Um, yeah, and uh, um, One Blue Lagoon, I hope I answered your question about files and rasps. Um, if not, um, follow up heart. and Sarah will answer. Cool. We got a heart. Hold fast. I love a hold fast. Have you used a hold fast? Um, when we were carving the first time. Okay. But Let me grab one for you. Dig underneath the bench. I don't know if that works, but this one. Ooh. Okay. I don't think I've christened this hold fast, so it might, this hole, so it might be a little fun. So if you hold it in place, this one is a little bit slippery because there's some oil in it. If you hold it in place. Oh, it did good. There. Okay. Just one they tap like and it's the down. multiple cameras, but that's not a Celtic weave. No. I'm sorry. I didn't oh, do a Celtic not weave. Celtic either. weave for either of us. No. And I don't like my design. <laughs> I'm going to change it. You never will. I know. Yeah. You're dealing um, with me. Let me grab a V tool. And then I have this little carving knife, a little carving mallet. It's a Shop Fox um, that I bought on Amazon. I think I have a link to that one as well um, in my tools list. I'll show you down here. And I love this little chisel, this little mallet. Uh, it just makes everything so easy. You can hold it in the palm of your hand and start into this. And with a V tool, carving. It's just as simple as that. If you can follow a pencil with your with your hand, and follow a line with a pencil, you're not too far behind being able to carve. And anyone can do this. So oh. James, Robert S. has a question. Are you choosing the white oak for strength and rot resistance or because we have it in abundance? Because I have a <laughs> lot of white oak. But I like this stuff. It's just kind of nice. This is kind of one of those nice projects because it's just a tiny little piece that you can make out of anything you have on hand. And he didn't want to spend money on his mom. Who would want to do that? <laughs> now, if you want, I've got another V-tool right here. Okay. And, and then 
I've got. I don't know if you want to try this one or you want to try it here. You try the little one. Okay. All right. This is my other one that I made um, not that long ago. Live oak. I love this little thing. But yeah, we're just going to work around this. You don't have to follow your lines. You're the one who made them. Just make it whatever you like. As Bob Ross would say, it's your world. You can do whatever you like. And I did wear the wig tonight, so. <laughs> yes. Uh, go back to two. Yeah. So you guys can see that. And this is the part that I just enjoy. Just something simple like that makes this that much better. Jeez. Oh, Sorry. And then I'm going to flip it over. Oh, one thing I do want to make sure is that I transfer this line all the way across so that the, the, the edge of the blade transfers. Okay. And I get that same line going all the way around. How's yours coming? It's coming. Is that like a teardrop or oh, oh I see. It's a, a heart. heart and the I had to do the round. Like, oh, yeah, that's cool. yeah, 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 yeah. It's a heart. It will be. Okay, <laughs> okay. don't now, don't watch me for right now. now. When you, that's um, for sure. What? When you're getting into fine detail oh yeah, you're you guys are doing by hand. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Because the mallet doesn't always work for me. Yeah, I like I, I like working with the mallet. Um, for me, the mallet is just it gives me more control. It's easier to work with. It does have more control. But the problem, the the thing I don't like about working with the hand is I get too aggressive, and so I often slide right past. And uh, it's very don't easy to do that, with your hand. Don't say that because I'm about ready to do that. Yeah, especially <laughs> when you get right to the end and you're working on it, and you don't want to put any pressure. And the moment it breaks out, you're like, ah, oh no. Um, but with your hand, you get a much cleaner, smoother slide through the wood, and it's easy to do a lot of those really clean works. Um, so, six of one, a dozen other, give it a try, see what you like. And it depends on the angle that you're doing it, too. Yeah, yeah. So I'll work on one side, and then come around and work on the other. And I'm just kind of playing with this. This is one of those projects that there really is absolutely no right or wrong to it. It's just a chance to experiment and try something new and have a little bit of fun. And if it falls apart and it's not something you like, then oh well. Um, then you give it you to just, your kids. <laughs> yeah, you only spent like 45 minutes an hour on it. And uh, you've learned things and your next one will be better. So no pressure, dad's watching. Ooh, and, um, the papa's here. Well, not here, but. Okay, so two questions came up. Uh, tips on carving chisel brand, which sounds like you did a video recently, and then where did you get the hold fasts? Uh, these hold fasts, whoo, excuse me, these hold fasts are from Black Bear Forge, um, and I absolutely love them. You can get the cheap ones on Amazon that are cast, but eventually they will snap. Um, they're really not worth it. Um, uh, there are other companies that will make ones that are bent. But I just don't, they don't have the hold and grip that these do. Uh, these are hand forged um, by a hand on an anvil by a real human being in, uh, on the West Coast. <laughs> and they are gorgeous. I absolutely love them. So um, look it up. Uh, um, I always want to say Bearcat. He's another friend of mine on the West Coast. Um, Black Bear Forge. Um, look him up and he will give those. For chisels, I'm using two cherries. I also have, uh, the one my mom's using is a Peffel. Uh, those are the two brands that I have a lot of. Uh, two Cherries is kind of the the cheaper brand that still has good quality, and I really like them. They're made in Germany, um, very good chisels, and they're for the price that that's what I usually suggest people get. The Peffel are really good with a lifetime warranty, and you can usually get those in any woodcraft. Um, so if you need that particular chisel now, I can go and get those. Um, Did you write that down, Dad? <laughs> no, he wanted to know what was for supper. Uh, <laughs> he's wood <got> shavings. <laughs> so let's see. Um, now that I have this carved out, I want to okay. smooth out the handle. I think you've already started doing some of that. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to round this all over. Um, so I'm going to go back in here into the vise. And then you're going to release my dogs. <laughs> oh, here. Yeah, here, let me show you guys how to do this. Because I have not a clue. Back over. Oh, I'm still, oh, three, I'm hitting the wrong button. There we go. So once this comes up, now what, for releasing them, you just tap the back. Oh, and they come through. okay, cool. So cool. I'll let you try right. and knock it down. I'll oh, do, do it the other next side time. Ready? 
Oh, uh, you can do the other side later. Yeah, I can do the other side later. Okay. Because I take longer than you do. So then for the cleanup, um, you can rough it in with the rasp and file just like you did before. And then come in with the file. And I'm just giving it a light edge on here. I'm not looking for anything special. Then I can come in with a cleaner, lighter file. Just feather in those sides. And this will give it a really nice clean surface. Uh, well, let me, sorry, let me switch back to this. Um, or option number two is I could come in with a spoke shave. And the spoke shave is actually a little bit faster. And you can shape it out really quickly, especially if I use the light side of it. And I just work it back and forth like that. And give it a nice clean surface. Ooh, went against the grain. Oh well. Took a little bit of tear out there. So that will be a little bit deeper on that side. You know, carving really, really taught me about wood grain. The, the, the wood grain. I mean, that oh, was yeah. a huge teacher. Um, and if you really want to, you could come back through with sandpaper. Um, I actually like the feeling of a clean file to be the last thing that touches the wood on something like this. If you're really good at it, a spoke shave, you can finish with that. I'm not quite that good. Maybe one of these days I'll become good at the spoke shave. I think sandpaper is a great idea. <laughs> sandpaper works well. Uh, the only downside to sandpaper is if it's the last thing to touch the wood, sandpaper leaves grit in the wood, which isn't a huge issue um, if it's the last thing to touch the wood. But if you're going to then come back in it with a chisel, um, that sandpaper in the wood can dull the chisel easier. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so it's when you're working with carving, don't sand and then go back to carving. So I'm going to use the file here on this inside shape. Just a little bit faster on this hard to get, air, get to area. And then come in with the spoke shave. Clean this up. Okay. Always reading with the grain. Clean that up. Clean this up. Here, let me turn this back to two. Yeah, I'm liking this multiple camera thing. I would like to have one that's like an overhead shot. Although this video is a little bit odd because we're working on both ends of the bench at the same time. So we're both trying to kind of be in frame. Okay, I, I need to see. Oh, okay. Yours is smoother. It feels like a different piece, well, here, like a different type of wood. Try that. So that was the last thing to touch it. That's one of the problems with oak is that there's a lot of grain in it. There's a lot of. Um, oh yeah! All right. Yeah, spoke shave is is fantastic. It's the way to go. Here, when I'm done with this one, I'll give you this file. This one is. So what you're saying is that you've kept the best on your end of the. You could reach over and grab them any time. <laughs> yeah. Still hasn't changed in all these years. No, not really. There. So, here. Oh, I got a little more here. So, I'm just going to feel it and rub it, file it here, file it there, get my hand close to it. Got a couple edges that I want to get rid of. There. See that? Oh, a little more. That be something more. Okay, he did give me a quick Here. tutorial on the spoke shave beforehand, just to let you know, because I really had no clue. <laughs> and I didn't have <laughs> too clueless here. Okay. Cool. See, see what you think of that one. Yeah, then you also notice as, uh, especially with this, with this really old oak, the more your hands touch it, the more um, it gets slightly darker. Ah. Okay, totally different shape. Mm -hmm. Different shape for different people. So now, 
we're going to turn this block of wood into a knife. Um, the first thing I need to do is put the... Uh, I thought it was, it's escaping me what the name of that, the, the, the separation is between the, mm, the blade and that. I'm, I'm not a knife smith, sorry. Uh, let me zoom back over to this, show you a little detail here. And what I'm going to do is basically do a little bit more carving. Slide this out here, tap it down. There we go. And this line I've drawn across here. Hey, nice. Hey. Um, is rather than coming straight out with a V tool like this, with it coming out in, 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 like uh, 30 degrees this way and 30 degrees this way, I actually want to turn it so that one of the fins ah. is standing up vertically. Okay. And this will give me a nice clean edge running right along that. Except for. I'm probably going to want to move totally vertically. Pretty close. The outside edge of it vertically. So I'm going to move this over a little closer so that there's less leverage spinning this. Wow. All right. Okay. So everyone Let's keeps. Start with a light pass and then go to heavier. What's that, babe? Typing Ricasso, Ricasa, something. Is that related to what you were just talking about? What was that? Ricasa, Ricasso. The something between the. Uh, I, don't I don't know. Did oh, I don't know. Did I miss something? Oh, the separation between the, the tang and the handle. Okay, good. I'm glad somebody's paying attention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a clue. Okay. I don't know that I've ever even heard it before. I've heard it before. I just... One of okay. these days I want to get into more blacksmithing. And so what I want to do is cut down a little ways on one side. Okay, you really, really do want a, dark, a deep bevel. Yes, um, because as far down as you go on this is going to end up being the thickness of your blade. Since I do one side, I'm going to turn it over and see how far I've come in here. I see. Mine's not really straight. Is that okay? We'll just make because the other side. And I'm throwing tools around. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't Just a chisel. <laughs> make sure that the other side matches. So carry this line across. Okay. And then carry this line across. Because I, I, you know, I'm holding it with my thumb up here. Uh -huh. and You're just doing so a single blade? I think so. Cool. Is that all right? It's yours. You can do whatever you want. Okay. All right. Um, and so once I've done one side, I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. And then where those two bevels come together inside, that's going to determine the thickness of the blade the rest of the way out. So... I'm basically pinching in from both sides. And where those two pinches come together, that's the thickness of the blade the rest of the way. So I'll start with this one. I'll do the same thing again over here. Make sure my lines line up. up over there a little more off and so I'm going to check both sides make sure that it's going to line up on the other side and then take it down to a depth that I'm just eyeballing basically they're talking about food yes <laughs> peas uh, and ricasa. tuna someone, Yum. <laughs> someone talked about pork chops and mac and cheese and I said James doesn't like meat on bones <laughs> and then someone said he doesn't strike them as a picky eater. I said, it's meat on bones and tuna and peas. Which, James, what was the first meal you were served ever at my house? I don't mind tuna and peas. I just don't mind the peas. I don't want the peas in the tuna. I love the tuna. And what's the first uh, thing his future mother-in-law ever made for him? Yes. Tuna and peas <laughs> yes, Earl. And I will never live it down because I ate it, but I didn't ask for seconds. <laughs> Not okay. the best response to I have uh, a question what's that okay so it is kind of a, it's much straighter on on this side right you're yes you're flattened out totally yep. all right I just want to make sure mm -hmm. good so I'm just gonna do this and show you what I'm doing here it's easier to explain after it's done right and basically thinning out the blade here with just a, a regular is it a bench just a chisel? bench chisel okay Ooh, I didn't do this earlier. I did like that. I'll show you in just a moment. Okay. 
Okay. So you got down both sides? Oh, no. Mm -mm. But I got need the... your hammer to loosen oh. my dog. I am still using this hammer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> the wrong balance. <laughs> Okay. She's making fun of me. I know, she's cackling over They're there. They're talking about Mother's Day and how James should make spoons to replace the other ones, except oh. until Pampered Chef came along. Yeah, 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 that's very true. Okay, so let me zoom over to this one and show you guys this. What are the time? 7.30. Okay, we're doing good. Um, so here we've got, let me make sure I'm focused in. <laughs> this is hard to do upside down. <laughs> Okay, so here we've got this here, and we have carved in basically from either side. We're basically just creating a stop cut. I say basically a lot. You do, yeah. And then I want to come in with this beveled down, and I want to take the thickness of the blade from here back to that a little ways. And here my grain is running away okay. from me. Okay, bevel down, gotcha. And so I want to make this stop cut just a little bit deeper, so I'm going to actually use the chisel to create a traditional mortising stop cut. And then work at this. So because my grain is running away from me, I'm gonna work with the stabbing motion. And I'm gonna take your two this. cherries. It's a thicker. Yeah, it's a bigger yeah, V. Yeah, it's a bigger V. All right, we have a question for mom. Yep. Is this your first time ever woodworking? You're doing great. <laughs> is it my my first time woodworking james she james, taught me everything i know yeah james taught me um how to carve um a year ago actually and um i love it i wish i could say that i had time to do it i don't because we're not home very much but um but um we had our own construction company so it's not the first time for hammer hammer and Chisels. Chiseling so was my life before, so. Yeah. Okay. So I'm basically sure. what I want to do, oh, I said it again, sorry. Basically. <laughs> is uh, I want to thin out the portion of the blade near the tang. Um, <gasps> oop, grab my microphone. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's thin here, right in front of the handle, because that's our, our thickness. I want to actually thin out the rest of this, but rather than hitting this with a chisel, um, that runs an issue, because if it catches the grain and the grain dies, you cut out a chunk. What I would like to do is bring a hand plane in here and carve that out, but basically a <laughs> spoke shave is a hand plane, oh, uh, just okay. with a really, really yeah. small sole. So if you think about that, this will allow you to get a nice clean cut up into the surface, and so I want to... I want to thin this whole thickness down. Thin this thickness down. <laughs> uh -huh. So I'm going to put this in here. You want to thin it. Let me switch this back over. Kind of like um, show you right here. So on this, I'm going to grab this spoke shave with a flat bottom. And I'm going to lift it up a little bit higher, actually. Can I use this yeah. now? Um, and this, because I've cut that chunk out, now the spoke shave can get out there up close to the handle. And I can start to hog off material. And I broke my knife. You didn't. Oh, well. You did. That is what Where's we make clamps tape? for. <laughs> Your so, dad would say duct tape. Well, I will put some super glue on it in a little bit. Actually, let me go ahead and get some super glue. Let me back out of this. Okay, did you give yourself a really good edge here? Did I give myself a really good edge? On that center? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, I did come back and clean you it. Came, that. Yeah, you came in and stop, stop cut it, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's put some super glue in here. Oh wait, bevel down. Yeah, yes. good, Myra. Uh huh. Let's put a clamp on it. I have to say, it has been very interesting being taught things by my son. <laughs> Duck says smaller knife. Small <laughs> <laughs> yes, short knife. <laughs> put this microphone back on. And let's try on the other side. Let's see if we have the clamps in the way now. 
So now that I know the grain runs that way. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> I'm going to clean out closer to the tang there. Actually, where is this one? No, let me grab one of the wooden ones. Where are those here? Okay, I wasn't paying attention what you did down by the... Okay. Just where I flattened that out, right. this, that allows the spoke shape to get in there. So you just want a nice flat section right at the base. Yes. Without just like three quarters of an inch way back. Now see, this is different than when he taught me how to carve. Because when we were carving, he would show me something, and then I would do it. And we've been doing this together. I have no clue. Okay. Y'all get to watch him. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just Mama winging it. So let me try. I'm just figuring this out first. Because I did this earlier, but this is a step that I didn't do in my prototype. I'm just seeing what's the best way exactly to do it. Yeah, the best way is to do it earlier. Okay, um, so when you get there, I'll okay, show you. Okay, so is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Is that halfway good? Good. Okay. I'm just flip it over and do the other side. Okay. Um, here, let me switch this back over and show you. Okay, I just have to tell you, I love playing with this. You like to hold fast? Dog. I do. I think that is so much fun. Just saying. I don't know All why. Right. <laughs> we have a super chat. Woo -hoo! All right, one blue, one blue lagoon again. Can you talk about using these techniques on items intended for use with food out of possibly more difficult woods like olive or fruit woods? Ooh. Um, what's the question? Talk about. If possible, more difficult woods like olive or fruit woods. And if it, if they're coming contact with food, they're going to have to have a food safe finish on them. Um, yes. Well, to be honest, any um, any finish is food safe after it's cured. Ah. Uh -huh. um, See, but then there's a lot of people who get really really picky about that, and they're like, yeah. no, it has to be a specific finish one way or the other. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I use boiled linseed oil um, a lot, at least the homemade stuff, is it's just linseed oil, basically. Um, but uh, as to, um, here it is. Can you talk about using these techniques and items? Oh, so how do you do this in harder woods? Well, in all honesty, um, white oak is about as difficult as it gets. Um, especially this white oak, because this is really chippy, brittle, um, you look yeah. at it long, it splinters off and splinters go in one direction like mom's running into right now. I'm really, really running into it. Um, and uh, olive wood is, is kind of the same, but olive wood tends to be interlocked a little bit more, so it, it tends to cut a little bit smoother. Um, and so, I mean, you can, you can do this with anything. It's just the more complicated the wood gets or the more the grain goes wild or the harder the wood gets, the more you have to take your time and take smaller curls. Um, it's not something that is... Um, the, the techniques don't change that much, <gasps> if at all. That's why you want to be beveled down. Oh, that's why I'm having right, they such say, a hard sorry, time. Sorry, that's a bit vague. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out the... Are you talking about the finish or the techniques used to do well, it? Well, I, I think he's talking about the techniques on items intended for use with food out of... make. Uh, possibilities of more difficult woods like olive wood or fruit woods. Um, the, the techniques oh. really don't change. It's just you have to go a little slower. Um, you have to take smaller chips. Why did you just run out? I didn't run oh, Yeah. You're fine. <laughs> um, so it, there, there really isn't any difference between working with a really easy thing like basswood or working with a really difficult thing like an uh, aged white oak. Um, they work basically the same. It's just the more difficult the wood is, the more they splinter out, and the more that you just have to take it slower, take smaller bites, and, and take your time. Um, 
it, it, it's really not that big of a, a complication or difference between the two. Um, when you're talking about you know food safe, um, most all woods are, are perfectly food safe. Um, some people have some pickiness on a couple woods, um, and I've heard some people complaining about things like walnut uh, for people with nut allergies, but other people say no, that's not a problem at all. I really haven't looked into that that much. Um, so um, one blue lagoon, if if that doesn't answer your questions. Um, just uh, post down below, and Sarah will tell me, and I, I can I can clarify. I saw a little I more. got it. So one one, one big ah, thing cool. about about food safe though is most people think of it as can this go in the dishwasher? Yes. <laughs> it's a wood product. You put it in the dishwasher. It oh. absorbs wood. It absorbs water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. And you know if you're okay with that and you 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 know it's going to you know swell and change then oh well i mean it's fine um you can i i i have put wooden products in and some of them especially if they have a glue joint you you never know if they're going to come out but if it's a solid piece um they're going to warp but if you're okay with that then you're okay with that okay. one blue lagoon gave you the, the good okay um here let me go back to this one um so the next thing on the knife is we need to cut a center line here and I'm going to do this before I get too much farther because my knife is getting brittle I don't want to take it down much thinner here yet I'm going to do that slowly as I come at the knife line so what I want to do is draw a center line on the surface here um, of where the edge of the blade will end up coming I hope you guys can see that so that I can start working on that I'm just going to take it a little bit of a time and with this being so weak and running into that problem you know, talking about, you just do the same thing with more difficult woods. Um, this is one of those examples. I just need to take my time slower and look at every stroke I'm doing, otherwise I'm going to snap it again. Now this should be glued up. Yeah, that's good glued up. I'm going to put this in lower into the vise. Oh no, I glued my knife into the vise. <laughs> yeah, let's pull that out. Well, we can clean that up later. <laughs> it's one of those nights. Um, Mama I'm going to clamp this down a little bit lower. Do you need a hug? Honey? I need a hug. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Mike Evans wants to know, can you do one out of Corian? Nice oh, hey. Um, yeah. Um, uh, actually, I did, um, let me break those because I did a video uh, a couple months ago where I actually um, made a Corian countertop out with just all hand tools. And yes, Corian works very well. It's um, Some Corians actually have um, granite powder mixed into them so they will dull your blades very quickly but you can still work them you just got to understand it's going to dull your blade you have to sharpen it more often i mean for goodness sakes people in egypt carved stone with bronze tools um <laughs> you can work corian with a with a high high speed steel blade you're just going to sharpen it occasionally um so I mean, a lot of people like to over complicate the quality of the wood because it chipped out earlier, I'm just taking my time. Okay. Do you want this one for that? No, unless you want this one. Nope. This is my favorite one, so. Ah, yes. And I'm going to stay away from that line for a good while. Just going to take my time spoke shaving it out. I love working with the spoke shave. When you hit the sweet spot, it's really nice. And I'm taking my time. My everything is saying, you know, take a heavier cut, move faster. Um, but I'm seeing that knife bowing, and I'm thinking, mm, it cracked out earlier. And there's a pretty good chance I'm gonna crack it out again. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take my time, practice with it, and glue my knife to the vise again, and break okay, the handle again. If my, I'm trying to think. It's broken. Totally. <laughs> Do no, I just didn't leave. I gotta. Do you want to finish up on mine? Okay. No, it's coming. If my thumb is here, my blade, I want my my sharp part on this side, right? Because that's where my thumb. Yeah. Goes. Okay. Yeah. So now, um, because it broke, I'm gonna try and do a few other things without the vise, so I can actually hold it with my hand. So I'm gonna try and spoke shave one-handed. <laughs> it's basically like just using a knife with. Except for that keeps snapping. So yeah, I think I pretty much wasted this one. Oh well. That's one of the fun things. We're just experimenting, we're playing with things. And life doesn't always go well. And that's one of the fun things about doing a live is 
you guys get to see it. Uh, most of the time, if I were doing a video and this broke, well, then I'd make a new one, um, and you'd see that video. But, oh well. Um, maybe I'll fix it later. Maybe I won't. Okay. Oh. Well, then show me what to do on mine. Okay. Uh, why don't you bring it over here into the light a little more? Okay. Let's see, am I on this oh. camera? Yes, I'm on this camera. So, what he's telling you is that I've been working in the dark. Well, it's just no. easier to work I around this fight than that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, back okay. this up. Okay, so we've got our knife here. Yeah. Okay, and so what mm -hmm. you want to do is bring this all down to a knife line here. And what I want you to do is to <laughs> <laughs> So let's, let's actually draw a... The, that's the, the sharp the edge. ...line on here. Okay. I'm just going to eyeball down it. Oh, that's nice. Nice and straight there. Yes, it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, and then I want to put this... Yeah, actually, let's put it here. And let's grab this one. The and so... Shave by shave, I'm just going to hold it at the angle I want the blade to eventually be. Okay, so that it's so I'm not going to be tipping here, it here and here and here. I'm just going to hold it at that angle, right? And I'm going to work on the high spot that's down here. And oops, see, I hit that line there. Mm -hmm. So that means that I'm I'm holding it too much of an angle this way. So I'm going to roll it back a little ways. Oh, okay, that's what. Okay, gotcha. Oh yeah, you got the good one. I know. Now, do you want to have this flat end, or do you want to come to a, a rounded point? Well, most knives I know aren't flat like that. Well, I mean, do you want it to come to a point yes, here? Yes, I or do want, you want it to a point, yes. Like this? Yes, I'll stop being snarky, yes. I want it to a point, babe. Like that. Mm-hmm. You got it, Bobby Joe. Okay, so there. I got that line yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's get rid of this. Can I get rid of that? This is too much fun, though. I know. Here. Here, let me zoom in on this then. One. Okay, but it'll go faster if you do it, so. <laughs> it's the oh, tip. Pick a spot. Sorry, focusing in. <laughs> now, what you want to do, here, let me show you, mm -hmm. is we want to actually cut it back to that line. So you can see it's a long ways away from the line here. And it's almost at the line there. Okay. So I don't want to hit this spot at all. I want to hit, just want hit to up here at the top. Uh -huh. So I'm just going to hit but up here the, at the top. But the tip of it is really hard because it, it's moving too much. There you go. Ooh, that's going loose. And see what's really cool is now he can blame any any technical problem with it's the spoke shave. It's the spoke shave. Mom. It's mom. She did it. They're all worried you're going to break her stick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to break what? You're going to yes, break, break her stick too. <laughs> Why is that tightening down? I should move it with this one for this point. There, now we're getting close to flat with that line. Yeah. And so now I can take a longer shaving until I get to that okay. line. Need it back. Yeah, there you go. Now you're probably going to want to round that a little bit. Uh-huh. So yeah, I am. <laughs> like that. Is that the shape you're looking for? That's the shape. Yeah, that's okay. a good letter I can, opener. I can yeah. put this line on here. And I'm eyeballing down it to let us know. So now the hard part comes, turn this back up, is getting this angle here. Because as I'm cutting at this angle here, rather than keeping it at that angle here, I actually want to turn the spoke shave as I get up here. Uh, so I'm going to hold okay. that angle, but then... So that the whole thing is that is sharp on that side. Yes. Gotcha. All right, James. Chris Platt wants to know brand and model of the spoke shave. Here. This is a Stanley 151 right here. This one, but I do not know. This one is the nice one. Yeah, it's a... It's a it's a fantastic, fantastic um, spoke shave, and, and I would love to know. A roll. It's to it's it. one I've I've never seen anywhere else, so it's kind of a hard thing to find. <laughs> so now I've I've hit this line all the way along there, and so this side is done. Okay. Um, let me just kind of feather this off a little bit. Get that back a little bit. And so then we can do the exact same thing on this side. Just hit the high spots. So I can tell at one point it's low and another point mm -hmm. it's high. You can hear it. 
And and one side the, the wood the wood grain is yeah all the grain much, is running yeah. at a diagonal across it. This really uh -huh. isn't the I picked out the wrong sticks for this, and that's what happened with mine. Yeah, is the grain runs it's yeah, it's diagonally all the way right, across all the way through. Yeah. Oops. Oh well. So when you're carving on it, you yeah, you feel the wood grain two. so badly. Mm -hmm. uh, grab this one. The rounded bottom allows me to get closer to the bottom here. Here you can hear that the difference. Uh -huh. We're running against the grain there, whereas here it's we're running so with the grain. Yeah. But that's good to know because when I was doing it, I thought, oh, it's just because an amateur's doing it. No, nope. it's it's wood grain. I mean, the amateur part was there too, but <laughs> it's not quite as embarrassing <laughs> when it's the wood grain. There, now we're getting close to the blade. When I get up here on the tip, I want to be very careful. Not to break. Because a lot of times what happens is you're putting pressure across the blade, uh -huh. and as it comes to the tip, you just t you break off the tip. And the knife just gets shorter and shorter. Yes. <laughs> but we want a nice clean tip up here so you can stick it in that gap at the opening with the letter. Except for I'm running, holding it odd. Can I ask you another question? Sure. Uh, the duck wants to know if the spoke shave is the one where you can set the one side with less blade. Um, you can do that with any spoke shave, basically. Um, I actually have all my spoke shaves set up with that where one side sticks out a little farther than the other. So if I cut on this side, I get a deeper cut. And if I move over to this side of the blade, I get a shallower cut. Um, there are very few spoke shaves where you can't do that. Here, you want to play with it more? Um, hmm. <laughs> so now I don't want to be the one that breaks. Now it. that I can bring into the light, I can see this and I actually want to go with the grain here. So I'm going to put that back in the vise. So now I can see here that when I'm pulling up like this, I'm running against the grain. So I actually want to go down this oh, way to clean it off. Yeah, yeah. Because you can push a spoke shape as well as pull it. You don't have to go one way or the other. And so on this side, we Much go down happier. the blade, and this side, we go up the blade. Mm -hmm. Much happier. Let me see. Let's clean that up a little bit more. And you can get really, really picky here really, really fast. Mm -hmm. There. See how that feels. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. But I want to clean that all up. Okay. Well, at this point, here, let me show you in camera one. Um, what we got here. So here we actually, oh, this is hard to do this way. There we go. Um, here you can see how the spoke shave can get up to about here, but it can't get closer to the tang this way. So all this area here we have to carve, which is the fun which part. Which is so horrible, isn't yes. it? <laughs> um, and so you can see here on this area here, uh, it was carved down to the surface a little bit better, whereas this area it was left a little bit high. But now that we have the blade in place, we can actually come back okay. and clean that out a bit clean more. Clean it up. All right. So we move back to two. And okay. All right. And with just the bench chisel? Um, yeah. I would just use the bench chisel and bevel up. Now, on this one, we have to remember which way the grain is running on these. And on these ones. This is the rough side. Yeah. This so all the, the grain is running up this way. So you want to chisel this direction. That direction. Into it. Okay. So. Yeah. And then and my little hammer. I'm lost. Uh, here. But before oh, we, oh, that's sounds weird. Before we do that, I want to show you one other thing, and uh, this is a card scraper. Card scraper. Uh -huh. um, and this is the most amazing thing, because you can use a card scraper and almost never sand again. And so once we get close to the end, the card scraper, especially on this wood, where you have the grain running every direction. Oh, wide chisel. Well. You want to chisel to I get a little bit lower. That, yeah. This just refines the surface. I mean, you can take off material with it, but you can see here how we're just taking off these tiny curls. Uh -huh. But with a card scraper, you can clean it up. So we'll we'll be hitting that at the very end. Bevel down. Bevel down. Yeah, because okay. if you have gotcha. it, let me pull out the big one and show you guys. Well, she's doing this. This is a kind of a uh, one. So let me pull this out here. If your bevel is up on the chisel and you cut into the wood, the chisel is going to want to dive down. Whereas if you're bevel down, 
then you have control of the wood. You can actually ride that bevel and you can angle it and you can go flat across the wood or you can put it down and you can actually rise up through the wood. Oops, sorry, you can actually rise up through the wood. So putting it beveled down gives you far more control. Um, that's one of the, the weird differences between the power tool mindset and the hand tool mindset is because having the bevel up is the, the sensible way to do it because you're putting your force in line with the flat of the chisel. So that a power tool person picks up the blade and they almost always have the bevel up carving in. Whereas a hand tool mindset says uh, it's actually better to do it this way because you get more control. Now the problem with doing it beveled down is you get less force because you're uh -huh. chiseling that way, but your force is this way. So your, your force is, is not in line with the, the force with, with the where the chisel is going. But if you learn that when you push into the bevel, it kind of gets a rebound off the wood, and so your, your force is transferred. It's, it's not as much of an issue, and you, then you get more controls that you can, you can adjust exactly where your angle is going by lifting the handle up and down. Whereas if you're, if you're bevel up, you really can't adjust where it's going. It's just going to dive into the wood. And so that's why the hand tool person usually flips it up. And that's why most all bench planes have the bevel down. It's easier to control. And uh, it's, uh, it gives you a, yeah, it's just the, the common way of doing it. Okay, what think the? Ooh, pretty. I like is that. it still no, need to come down good. some more? No, it's come through um, and clean this. It is much harder. You're, you're, you're very right. It is much harder to get the, the force yes. Why don't you change when your the bubbles. Camera? What's that? Switch the switch camera. camera. Oh, sorry. We're seeing his belly. You don't like my belly? <laughs> Hopefully it's his uh, and not mine. <laughs> <laughs> so um, now let me just sit this and see how this is doing. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. So let's once you flip that over, okay. and I'll show you how to do the other side. Where's now? There it is. Uh, the back. Other way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So with a card scraper, I'll start it and then let you finish. With the card scraper, you have a couple different things. Number one, you can get right up into the corner, and you can set that burr in there and pull it back. And basically what is on the end of this card scraper is on this corner, there's a tiny little burr that's hanging out like this. Okay. And so it's a hook that you put into the wood and you drag it back and you get these tiny little shavings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you can set that right into the corner of the wood and pull it back. Oh, and wow. And you get that, that shaving yeah. off there. And then you can clean up the wood, taking these fine, fine little scrapings off there. So what you want to do... Okay is if it's up here, you're not gonna catch anything. You're not gonna catch anything. As you come down lower, suddenly, right about here, you're catching. Okay. And so you're trying to feel that catch. And if you're working on a big surface, you're actually, you generally wanna push. So you bend the plate and you push away. But on something small like this, there's no reason to bend it because you can there's see There's not that surface. much, right. Not, not near yeah. this surface. Okay, so I have to be on where you're. Yep, just like that. Oh, oh, that's cool. Look at that, I have shavings! Ah! Okay. <laughs> and so even for doing the, the rounded surfaces and the handle and things like that, here, let me grab the other one. Uh, let's grab this one. I have like 30 card shavings because they come in all shapes and sizes and you can make them out of old soft plates. I just broke the tip off. Ah, you broke the tip off! <laughs> so the knife gets shorter. <laughs> yeah. So I can use this instead of sanding, I can just detail in oh, these compound surfaces. And I can use this great. one that has this, this hook shape, and I can use that to get in a little bit closer. Actually, I've never used the inside of this before. So this is kind of a cool thing, I use the inside. So now I just have oh, to... Where to go? What? I clicked the button and the oh, you would disappeared. <laughs> Okay. Well, um... So I just have to take it down to that point again. You could, or you could have the point out here and take some off oh, the back. Oh, okay. So you could just draw the angle this way. Okay. And take it off with? Um, I would shape it with a spoke shave and then smooth it out with the card stock. Card okay. You need a hand, babe? Nope. Here. Okay. Okay. You got it, babe. Gone. I can see it here, but it won't make it bigger. Oh, it that. helps to turn it the right yeah. way. 
This one. Nope, this one. Yeah, that's the one I When I clicked on it earlier, it didn't come up. Huh, what did you do? I don't know. I broke it. Um, maximize. Did it pop up on that screen? I see the chat, and that's Can you all. See the, oh. oh, yeah, there it goes. Just saying. I have no chat. You threw it over on the other window. I have a chat, but no pictures. Oh, I do the beach. Hey, look at that. <laughs> My wife can rejoin the chat. <laughs> She's there great. You go. Okay, come see what you think. Okay, so we're getting close to time here. Um, if there are any interesting questions, or uh, let's do this. Let's actually open it up for some questions. We basically covered how to carve a knife. It's not, uh, there's no massive science to it. It's just something you can kind of experiment with. And you can mess up and break it and not have a huge problem because, you know what? There's other pieces of wood out there. Because mama's got another one. And this is one of those fun <laughs> projects you can just go and play in the, in, the, in the shop and experiment with it and try new things and try a new tool. And you can find a technique that works for you. Um, so if anyone has any particular questions for my mother and you would like to hear her answer, um, go ahead and post those. Um, we'll probably be on here about another 10 minutes or so. But uh, yeah. Um, and for finish on these, um, you know, if you're, if you're worried about being food safe, um, just like an olive oil actually really isn't that much of a problem. Um, Coconut oil? If, if olive oil doesn't harden, it will go rancid. But when, once it hardens, it's not that much of an issue. Um, you know, there are people who are going to say, yes, there's lots of issues with it. But there's always people who are going to be complaining about something. Um, the other one is mineral oil. But mineral oil doesn't harden, so you've got to be regularly reapplying it. You're generally regularly re reapplying most. Um, coconut oil. Um, um, I would use boiled linseed oil. You just broke it again? Surprise. I'm just making it work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the boiled linseed oil I use is homemade stuff. The stuff you get at the store, I wouldn't do that because there's um, uh, metal dryers in there. But, uh, yeah. Are there any questions for Mom? Any questions? Let's see. River. Oh, Mike says Ridgewood works better. Want to talk about it? Ridgewood? Ridgewood. Is that what you said? It's hang on, where'd it go? R I V. -E now when you're when you're coming across like that. And they want to hear stories. An angle like that. You okay. probably want to bring it okay. more like this. Okay, now I have a question for mom. What's okay. your favorite story about young James? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, I should leave the room. <laughs> the one of you walking out on the roof? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There there were just way too many. Um, to, I was an excitable to, uh, child. An excitable? <laughs> um, my favorite story was that you or your brother? What on the roof? That was me. Okay. Oh, yeah. no. One day um, he was the one who came in to tell you. Oh, okay. One. Oh, oh, oh. That's. Of course, I was the one who told Dad about Jason, Jason driving a brick into the his head. The brick in his head. Yeah. Okay. No. One day, my mom is walking out of my husband's office and looks up and she says, "Do you let the boys walk on the roof?" James was five at the time. He'd climbed out of an upstairs window and was walking across the garage roof. And yeah. at that moment, we well, we knew long before that that he was going to be oh. a very special child. <laughs> yeah, by that point, though, I had been you know helping my dad in the, in the oh. house, and I'd been doing like second story siding on the ladder. And yeah, I, yeah, he, he yeah. had me on the roof of the garage. So at at five years old, he was on the roof. Of, well, up, up at the peak of the garage, siding, because I was terrified of being on the ladder. And so... And still. my f <laughs> Yeah, and still. Uh, <laughs> so my five-year-old son um, went up instead of me. That wasn't my idea, by the way. That was my husband's idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so we got a super chat from Darth Weeb, more mainly just saying hello it says thanks for Sarah. Thanks for joining us. So I said thank you. Oh. I'm enjoying it. Thanks, man. Um, was he wearing a cape at the time? <laughs> 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 no, he wasn't thinking of flying or anything. It was just the window was there, the roof was there. Well, we we had a window to get onto the roof, and um, 
I, several times I really was planning on taking a sled up there. Um, I'm so glad I didn't know. <laughs> because, you know, there's, there's a roof that's a great sledding hill. You know, there's, there's a snow berm at the bottom that's probably a good, what, two, three foot deep. So I'm fine. Yeah, that's very true. Um, actually, there are times of the year where the snow berm met the berm coming off the roof. So, mm -hmm. you know, we could mm -hmm. not have any problem. Do you remember when your son beat you to the roof, though, at two in Pennsylvania? Beat me to the roof. Oh yeah. JJ was on the roof at two. Yeah. In Pennsylvania. So it runs in the family. Oh man, it's the right side though, not my side of the family. Just, just to be clear about that. So Miguel's going. What you have a bro? And oh yeah. <laughs> he has a brother, a younger brother by the name of Jason, who um yeah, they did all sorts of crazy things together. Um yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, then, he's not he's not the only child even though he acts like it. <laughs> <laughs> and so they want to know do you still have James's first craft project and what was it? <laughs> what was your first craft? Probably a year or two old, I don't know. Yeah. Um, because because we were we a building family. They yeah. were always building something. So yeah. and we've moved so many times. I'm one of those mothers that doesn't keep it all. Yeah. It will be a, a rude awakening for my grandbabies. Um, that keep making things for me in the shop when they come to the house and can't find them all. Um, but anyway, no, I, yeah, I didn't I was, keep them. When I was four years old, um, my parents bought a house, and my dad thought, you know, it would be a lot easier if we just moved this stairwell over. We would have a lot more room. It would work out better. And so moving the stairwell over, well, then that means we're attacking the kitchen and the living room. And There so, was one room we didn't attack. Yeah, so, you know, before... A month is out you can stand on the front curb and look through the walls of the house and see the garage in the backyard <laughs> but by the age of five he could side he could drywall he could do concrete um he was learning electrical I, yeah i did electrical with, my, with, um, with grandpa uh-huh um yeah and so if you buy a if you buy a house in warren power tools. you might have a house that was wired by a five-year-old <laughs> But back then, he was using power tools, except for when he would carve with me. And by carving, I mean anything that was had to be chiseled. I loved that. So when he started doing hand tools, that's what I was the most excited about. So for those of you who say he does, he carves way too much, I'm sorry. <laughs> he comes by that honestly. That's that's me. That's that's my one influence I have on him. So mm, carving. Yeah, that's yeah. not the only. But anyway. <laughs> Kelly Curry wants to know, can you tell us a story your mom doesn't know about? Oh, dear. Oh <laughs> I'm sure that there are a lot of yeah. them. Um, do I want to know? Most of them have to do with the, the woods in Frederick. Um, you know, uh -huh. we, were, we moved there. I was like five years old, and we moved away when I was eight. And we had this, this woods up in the back, and I don't know what you were thinking, but you just let us go. and. Mm -hmm. We just wander off into time. the woods. We know what every mother It was, was a town of 350 yeah. people. Okay. It, it was a crossroads, and that was it. Yeah. So it was safe. Rolls You're going to get me in trouble. But then we, <laughs> there, was, there was a hill up behind Grandma Bessie's Grandma place. Grandma Bessie's, yeah. And it was a sledding hill. Mm -hmm. um, and so we used to go up there and go sledding. Well, then we found that there was a trail that went up the hill from behind her house through the trees. And it was a, a fairly broad trail, about you know, six, eight foot wide. Um, up through the trees, and so we'd sled down this. Well, you'd have to aim your sled perfectly, otherwise you'd veer, veer off course by a degree or so, and you'd nail a tree. But we thought that wasn't hard enough, and so we, we left the trail and went about 13 feet off the trail and would go down through the woods, and the challenge was we had to hit five trees before we got to the bottom, and the first person to get to the bottom wins. So your, your goal was to go fast, and your goal was to hit trees. <laughs> <laughs> And it was you and Jeff and Jason. Yeah. Jason, who was two years younger than him. So <laughs> if he's if he's six, okay. And Jason then of course we build this at four. We build jumps, <laughs> so we would jump, be midair, and hit trees, and that was a lot of fun too. Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. in the, the five man sled, we would all get on the sled and we get it. And if you're in the front, you just like curl up into the front mm -hmm. of the, the toboggan. Okay. But you notice I'm not shocked by it. <laughs> so hard. Yeah. We got a couple. One, does Jason do woodworking as well? Is this a family art? Ah. He does, but he he doesn't know what this thing is. Um. He knows what a chisel is. <laughs> what, what he it has used a couple to be, planes. We used to say, James will build you the house, and Jason will finish it. 
So Jason likes the fine, you know, making sure that every single piece is perfectly done together with sandpaper. It, this would just kill him. <laughs> um, he, yeah, he does, he does fine, He's but. also the, he's the programmer. Um, I, I do the hardware. He does the software. They're um, always the, the same coin, different yeah. sides. Like I do video work and he does um, voiceover recording. Um, so my, my audio is always usually the problem in my video, whereas he doesn't have the video, so that's his problem, I guess. But we, <laughs> we always thought Jason would be the one in front of the camera. Yes. And not Jason. Yeah, I'm always the one backstage, and this he's the one funny. who's acting out on the stage, so and that's yeah. a different thing. Yeah. Kind of cool. Got right. any more? A couple more. Um, okay. For Mom, what tool in a shop are you tempted to guilt trip him for? Guilt trip him to give to me? To guess. <laughs> It would be my roll of chisels. <laughs> <laughs> I just take this home with me, <laughs> and let's see. I think you have new ones too. Oh, I'm sorry. I have. He has new ch chisels too. But mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> any chisel. Um, two cherries. If if it if it has a two cherry label on it, I want it in my house. But then when he says the other ones are Peffle. so much better, Peffle. Hmm. Yeah, it would be the the chisels. For oh, sure. I was told earlier it's. The L, I think the P is silent. Yeah, there's like three different ways of saying it, and I've never heard the official way, so one of these days I might learn, but... So it's just L? No, no it's, it's Feffel, uh, Fell, or uh, fell? I've heard Feffel, fell. I've heard Pell, I've heard... I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd Swiss. love to know, um, especially if you're, if you're, I think it's, it's what, Swiss? Yeah, so. it's Swiss made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Duck says, "Ask for Stanley number two. Um, oh, <laughs> well, you know what? This um, the the spoke shave without a name. I'd take that after tonight too. That one's cool. <laughs> All right, mm -hmm. two more questions. One, mom, what did you think when he said I want to work with tools mostly older than eighty years? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. James is the one that he never surprises us." Um, because he because I always try to yeah he try anything he tries he will succeed at and go beyond our wildest dreams yeah she was the one who wasn't surprised by the hand tools my, my dad, dad was yeah, though he was dad. like why in the world would you mess with hand tools yeah. when there's such a thing as power tools and he's out there? still not convinced oh. at all no. he he's all about uh, efficiency and I'm about the experience so it's a little mm -hmm. which is very very, very weird because in most things I'm like my dad um, but that's one that I'm not. Mm -hmm. All right, and then what? So, because we were got to on the topic of food earlier. So, what was James's favorite dish growing up? Did you have a favorite dish? I like it. Food, it's edible. And, you know, one time, if you asked me, I said I would say eggs, but I think that was only for like oh, like four to five years that. old. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you I, liked cowboy soup. I, right? I don't like peas. I don't like avocado, and I don't like raw mushrooms. But other than that, it's all food. I yeah. like it. He was not a picky eater. So and I've started eating food. avocado now, yeah. so the list has gotten smaller. <laughs> yeah, as have you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think that's about it. Unless there's anything particular, Sarah? No. Cool. Well, then, so, uh, what's that? So, instead of a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reason I gave it a shorter piece of wood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, this was a lot of fun and just kind of a good time to hang out in the shop and experiment. If you have any ideas or something you'd like to see us build or if there's someone you'd like to see me bring into the shop, let me know. Or something um, you want him to carve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking for dumb, stupid ideas that you can mess around with in the shop, not any particular grand build. Um, you know, as today, we're not really building anything that's, you know, artistic and fantastically worthy, but it's a good way to experiment and have some fun and get out in the shop and just play. Um, you really take away that, that whole burden of making something that's perfect and just to have some fun. That's what the shop is for, unless you're a professional builder. And in this case, what are you watching this for? <laughs> <laughs> also, you know, just to learn how to use the different techniques of it. Yeah. That's good for The more time you like spend this. with it, the, yeah. the better off you'll be. No one, no one starts off perfectly. Mm -hmm. Everyone makes mistakes and you just gotta, you gotta be used to that. You gotta come to the shop and realize that your first attempt will not be perfect. But hey, it'll be functional. And that's, that's actually a really sweet life. That will open a letter. It'll, it will open a letter. <laughs> um, you know, you really don't need to do that much more to make anything really spectacular. And then you can get into making things finer in time. That's something that everyone naturally does. Now the big question is, can I put that in my suitcase? Can I don't know. Carry on? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you experiment with that. It's like, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, so that's about it for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you do have any questions that we weren't able to get to, feel free to send me an email or uh, let us know in the chat. Um, and I will try and get to comments that I wasn't able to live. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have, have a wonderful, wonderful day. day. Have a wonderful life. <laughs> <laughs> Can you click it, babe? Yeah, hang on.